Hey LinkedIn, what's up? So today is all about duct detectors. Um, and we got Drew here with me. He's actually the mastermind behind all this. Say hi, Drew. Hey. We're proper social distancing, so just you know, just want to make that clear as well. So duct detectors are actually one of my favorite devices to talk about because um, it's one of the most commonly uh, incorrectly installed devices as well as tested devices. Uh, there are several requirements for how it's supposed to be installed um, as well as how, it's, how it has to be tested. So we're gonna go through all of that. Um, before we do, well, let's talk first. So Joint Commission, just for those that are Joint Commission accredited, EC235, EP3, uh, there's other devices that fall under that. We're just looking at duct detectors today. Um, NFPA 101-2012 is what we're using along with 72-2010, which is referenced by uh, 101-2012. We're doing that because um, hospitals that receive CMS funding uh, are required to comply with, with these codes. So let's talk first about how a duct detector functions. All right, so inside of the duct detector, this is, is a smoke detector. This is just the housing that goes over the top of it. All right, so, and this is called your supply tube. It's actually got holes on it. Uh, these holes face the direction of airflow, all right? So those holes force air into this chamber. There's a baffle that splits the smoke detector in half, and it actually forces the air into the, the, the smoke detector housing chamber, and then it forces it out of the exhaust tube. Um, so differential pressure is important. We're gonna come back to that. So just, just an understanding of how it works. Duct detectors are most commonly used to shut smoke dampers, to shut down air handling units, sometimes shut doors within smoke compartments of hospitals. Um, so uh, it's important to understand how it works before we get into the testing. Common misconception is that duct detectors have to sound the building alarm within the hospital, meaning they have to sound the, the evacuation alarm or fire alarm system. They don't. Um, NFPA 101, 2012, uh, allows for it to be a supervisory signal as long as it transmits to a constantly attended location. There's a few caveats there, so go, go check out the code. I'm actually gonna post all the codes in the uh, comments below so you guys can go reference it. Um, moving on, NFPA 72-2010, chapter 14 is the inspection, testing, and maintenance um, requirements. Uh, a commonly missed test is actually a, a semi-annual visual inspection of the duct detector. What you're looking for here is a few key things. Um, when duct detectors are installed, they actually have to be installed at a slope. Um, and manufacturer's recommendations will tell you what that slope needs to be. But the reason for this is, is if it's sloped upward, then water will condense um, and actually fill up the housing. We have seen, Drew and I have seen, uh, the housing is completely full of water and cause a fault on the system. Um, so if it's not installed correctly, then it's gonna, it's gonna cause that water to, to, to go into the housing. So very important, uh, make, sure, make sure you're doing that. Also check that the holes are facing the direction of airflow. So if air's flowing this way, hits the holes. That's important. Without that, you're not, you can't do differential pressure, which means no matter if this smoke head works or not, it's not gonna work because it can't get the air that it needs to actually test it. So it can function as a smoke detector, but if it's not getting that air, none of it matters. All right, so that's important. Um, and then also just check that the holes aren't clogged. If you don't have an access panel, which you're supposed to, but if you don't have an access panel, you can shine a light and often see the holes in the tube. These tubes also can be, you know, eight, 10, 12 foot long sometimes. So, so just make sure they've gotta be, at a certain distance, they have to be secured on the other side as well. Um, so there's not pressure being put down on the, on the housing. Um, Next is a functional smoke test. When you hire a company, uh, most of the time, this is the test they get right. Um, so what you do is you actually take, take a can of smoke. The newer ones have test ports. Uh, older, duct, older duct detectors won't. You'll actually have to take the housing off and spray it in there. All you're doing is a, is a functional smoke test to make sure that the, the, smoke, the smoke actually sets off the detector. Right? So this is not a sensitivity test, which is what we'll talk about in a little bit. Gotta spray a little bit of smoke. If you ever see a magnet, if you ever see them testing a detector with a magnet, fire them on the spot. It's not an approved method for testing. The only time that you can use a magnet is after you've done all these other tests, 
and you're just testing the relay and the emergency control functions that this detector initiates. So that's very important. Uh, next, and this is what I see most commonly missed, velocity and differential pressure tests. So manufacturers require that the duct detector fall within a certain velocity within the ductwork. Um, and this is just a general from what I've seen in my years of experience, 100 to 4,000 feet per minute uh, is pretty common. Check your manufacturer's guidelines to make sure, but as long as you're within that. What, what we use here is a thermal anemometer. It's got a thermal element, checks the, uh, the um, feet per minute. We actually put it through the exhaust tube um, and, and check it so we don't have to open the access panels. You can open access panels and do it. You can use a vane anemometer, which is a fan instead of a thermal, thermal link. Again, as long you're trying to get a, a gut check, if you're at if you're within close to within this range, um, you're fine, right? So um, the higher pressure is where it can be a little bit more complicated. The closer you get to the unit, often the more more airflow uh, you're going to see in those large ducts. So um, just make sure you fall within that. Differential pressure is next. We use a digital manometer for that, uh, and just have a couple of grommets. Uh, rubber grommets hooked to the tube, hook, you take one, hold it up to the uh, supply, take one, hold it up to the exhaust, check your differential pressure, make sure that it's in compliance with your manufacturer's recommendations. As long as it's in general, again, 0.1 to 1.1 inches of water column, you're good to go. Um, this is important, again, if you if you use this test, if you, if you then you confirm that the pressure the air is actually coming into the housing. So it's doing its job. It's gonna get the air to the smoke detector to set it off, All right? So that's important. Um, sensitivity tests are required within uh, one year after installation. Uh, and then code allows you to drop to two years as long as it's, it's calibrated after the first year. And then there's some other, you can drop down even further. So just go check it out. There's several sub bullet points uh, for sensitivity tests. Just know that you have to periodically test the detector for sensitivity. Um, and then after all of that, let's, well, let, first let's just recap. Um, visual inspection, check the tubes are down, make sure they're not clogged, make sure holes are facing the right direction. Functional smoke test, make sure the smoke head actually goes off. Velocity, make sure that the air velocity meets the requirements. Differential pressure, make sure the air is coming into the housing, right? Now, the only thing we have left um, is relays and remote test switches. Remote test switches go on the ceiling or, or wall, and it's a, it can either be a switch or it can be a light, but it's just an indication for firefighters for concealed detectors that are above ceiling, okay? Um, the, some of them have a test switch. You can use that test switch to actually test the emergency control function. That will trigger the relay. Uh, and the associated emergency control function. But this is this completes the test. You take the duct detector, you can test it, make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. So you've got to reference your fire alarm matrix to know what it's supposed to do. It could shut dampers, it could shut doors, it could shut down air handling units. So it's all in the programming. But that completes, completes the test of what the duct detector is supposed to do. So uh, as always, thank you, Drew. Thanks everybody, please post comments and stuff below. Uh, happy to talk about installation or ITM for duct detectors and uh, continue to check out for other videos.